In the past, this channel's been very critical of modern third wave feminism, and you know, that's just not right because it's sexist and it's demeaning to women to criticize feminist ideas just like I would criticize any other ideas. So today, I'm gonna find a way that I can help feminism. And what better site to do it on than BuzzFeed.com? The, 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 the best feminist site I could think of. Trademark. So last week's video was a little more serious, me ranting about like a thing that I thought was very important to me, and I just wanted to bring it back to the classic days of just ripping apart stupid stuff I see on the internet. Today we're going to be going over BuzzFeed's 11 ways men can help feminism, and maybe I can become not a sexist. Don't be an activist in the streets and a sexist in the sheets. This, <laughs> this just sounds like someone's in the streets like, hey, you should stop criticizing that woman and stop saying that feminism is dumb because I am a feminist. But then when they get in the bed, they're just like, hey girl, you know what would be really sexy? If I told you that you didn't deserve to get paid the same as a man. <sighs> okay, so you read King Kong Theory by Virginie Despentes? That name kind of sounds like more of like a pirate name, don't you think? And a bunch of Facebook statuses about feminism, and now you're convinced that feminism is your thing. Um, if you've decided to join a cause because you've read some statuses on Facebook and one book, then you probably weren't that bright to begin with. STOP THE CAR! <laughs> The first thing you need to do is check yourself and figure out what kind of macho behavior you're spreading with women around you. Well, you know me, ladies, I always spread the most macho behavior around the ladies because, you know, check these guns. It's about as powerful as a, as a regular paintball gun. Are you one of those guys that says they help at home? Well, I mean, I've kind of always been raised to do chores, so yeah, I do. Do you still give your dirty laundry to your mom because it's what she's always done? I mean, I do laundry too, so. Are you a father? No. When a woman gets angry, do you assume it's either because she's on her period or because she needs to get laid? No, but I do realize that periods are painful and I would be angry if I had blood gushing out of me too. And it's called sexual frustration for a reason. Just kidding guys, it's a joke, it's a joke. Don't, don't, don't kill me. It's a joke. And hey, do you think you emotionally support your girlfriend slash wife as much as she supports you? <laughs> well, th thanks for reminding me that I'm single. Number two. Listen, one of the main issues of sexism is that we have culturally silenced women and given men full control of the microphone for far too long. That's funny, because I'm pretty sure that free speech laws are for everybody, not just men. The first step in supporting feminism is to listen to what women have to say about their own oppression, so get comfortable and listen up. Right, okay, so listen to what others have to say, you know, that's just fine. And then we hold those ideas up to scrutiny just like we would, well, any other idea that gets passed around by any man, woman, or whatever. That, that's where you're going with this, right? Any ideas are held up to scrutiny no matter who they come from. Or, or was that not, was that not catchy enough for a BuzzFeed article? I, I, I get it, I get it, I understand. L listen, but but don't say anything. That's that's fine. Number three, shut up. Okay. Am I helping? Would you tell an oncologist your opinions on cancer? Oh well, no, because they actually went to school and got a degree in something that matters, unlike gender studies. It's also not necessary for you to heroically decide to play the role of devil's advocate in a subject that is not what a coincidence affect you in the slightest. Alright, cool, so you want me to care about these issues, yet you tell me that they don't affect me in the slightest, so why should I care about them again? Not that I don't care about issues, but I'm just saying, if you're trying to play to people who don't know anything about feminism, then why would you tell them that those issues don't affect you? They're just going to become more apathetic to the situation. And please don't interrupt us every five seconds to try to distinguish yourself from other men. Yes, we already know that not all men are like that. But if you care more about proving you're not like those other men than you do about truly listening to and understanding our thoughts and opinions on the matter, well, then you're not much different from the rest anyway. You know what's interesting? I see a lot of these people uh, try to defend whenever someone generalizes men and when people say not all men they say well you're just deflecting the 
conversation. But if someone says, hey, this feminist said that men should be locked up in concentration camps. Hey, these feminists advocate for the killing of men. Hey, these feminists believe in something that's just not true. And then you get a p bunch of people saying, well, not all feminists, you know, not all feminists, those are just radical feminists, and those are just feminazis. So it's okay when you generalize, but if someone else generalizes, then it's bad. Okay, that makes sense. I come from a world where all generalizations are pretty unfair. Number four, face your buddies. Now it's time to do actual dirty work. Face your colleagues. Yeah, that guy who constantly shares pics of naked girls in the group chat. The one who calls any woman above a size 4 fat. The one that makes a woman feel uncomfortable at a bar when she's clearly having a good time with her friends. The one who says his boss just needs to be <laughs> Or the one who makes small, haha, <laughs> very inoffensive, hehe, <laughs> jokes, ha, <laughs> freaking ha, <laughs> about assaulting women, no. Didn't that last one just tell me to shut up? So you want me to be quiet, but you also want me to talk when a friend makes a sexist joke or something. Knowing full well that it's just a joke. And when you say a friend that shares naked pics of girls in the group chat, do you mean like from the internet or girls that he knows? Cause if it's girls that he knows, that's messed up. I would call them out and say, hey, that person gave you those with confidence. You shouldn't be sharing those. That's kind of a jerk move. But if it's sharing pictures of the internet or like people's ECs on Instagram, like, hey, this girl's hot. Like, I wouldn't call someone out for that, that's stupid. And about someone calling a girl fat, I mean, that's mean, but I can't do anything to change his mind about that. Like if someone were talking about me and we're like, you know, I think this guy, he's above a size, whatever size is skinny for men. That guy right there, he's pretty fat, I don't really like him. I wouldn't be able to change someone's mind about that. And the thing about someone making you feel uncomfortable at a bar, if someone's trying to sexually assault or like just do general assault, I would step in, obviously. Most people would. But if it's a friend of mine and they're just trying to talk to a girl at a bar, then that's not bad. There's a difference between someone trying to talk someone at a bar and someone legitimately harassing someone. And someone that makes a comment about their boss, I mean, okay. I honestly don't care. And the person making jokes about assaulting women, who do you know that just says, so, hitting women, am I right? <laughs> I mean, if they make a joke that's offensive, I'm not going to call them out because it was just a joke. Number five, use your privilege for the right cause. Unfortunately, every time a woman points out a sexist attitude, like the fact that your mom is always the one in charge of preparing everything or a family meal, she's considered to be exaggerating. What are you saying, woman? Okay, have you ever met someone that actually said that when confronted with an opinion like that? Or even rude, you're so rigid! I say again, have you ever met someone that actually talks like that? What if you use your privilege for something more positive, like pointing out these sex attitudes to other men and getting on the side of women. Isn't that kind of insulting to insinuate that being a stay-at-home mom and doing things like preparing all the family meals is a sexist attitude, and you do realize that there are people who want to be a stay-at-home mom and choose to do that? And me disagreeing with you and saying that that's not always a sexist attitude is not me being against the side of women. Someone showing dissent to your opinion is not sexist, I'm sorry, that's just not how the world works. Number six, stop judging women. Every time you have a strong opinion about a woman, check it by asking yourself if the opinion is rooted in sexist ideas that have been perpetuated throughout your education. You're right. I and many other people didn't like Hillary Clinton because she was a woman, not because Benghazi, the fact that she took money from Middle Eastern countries that do terrible things to women. The fact that she's been caught lying many times. That's, that's not why we disliked her. It was because she was a woman. Duh. In general, don't comment on her appearance. Even if you think it's a good comment. Women suffer an incredible amount of social pressure about their bodies. Wouldn't a compliment take away some of that pressure though? Because I mean, it's a compliment. You're saying, hey, you look nice today. Hey, you're pretty. Now I get that there's a difference between complimenting women and going, dang girl, I wish I could do the sex to you, that's something completely different, I get it. But I'm talking about just legitimate compliments. When we women deviate from the mold that society determines, we tend to receive harsh criticism. Well, you're receiving harsh criticism from this article because it's kinda dumb. If a woman doesn't want to have children, she's selfless and has no soul. 
I mean, you don't think men get told the same thing if they don't want to have children? You don't think there's a bunch of uh, mothers of sons that are like, I want some grandchildren. If she wants a relationship, she's old fashioned, but if she wants the opposite, she's a slut. Now I do admit that that does happen sometimes, and there are people who think like that are idiots, obviously. Don't perpetuate this system. I don't. I treat women the same way I treat men. There's no difference in how I treat them. Number seven, when a woman expresses an opinion that makes you feel uncomfortable, try to understand why it makes you feel that way instead of getting all defensive or belittling her. We all have sexist attitudes. Oh great, that's just more of that even if you're not sexist, you're still probably sexist attitude that I keep seeing. They're just a product of the education that we've received and the societies within which we grew up. Checking oneself for these attitudes is a constant task with feminism, but hey, maybe if you're finding it challenging or difficult, it's because you're learning. Well, if someone says something that I disagree with, I'm going to counter that with my own argument, whether it's a man or a woman. That's equality right there. I don't treat anyone different, and I don't treat any stupid arguments different than any other stupid arguments. I try to combat them with logic and sometimes humor. Number eight, don't undervalue women's problems or say that we're exaggerating. No matter how hard you try to put yourself in our place, you'll never be able to experience what women experience on a daily basis. For that reason, don't belittle our problems. If a woman complains to you about the problem of street harassment, don't say, it's a compliment. To you, these issues are the exception, but to us, they are the norm. Oh, street harassment, you mean videos like this that took place over a 10 hour period, yet only got like two minutes of footage? And they were also being dishonest to their audience by claiming that the harassment was all around New York City when they specifically picked one poor area of New York City? Going to a ghetto and finding that people act differently. Hmm, I wonder why that is. Also where they conflate compliments with actual harassment, which are two totally different things. Now I am against actual street harassment, like touching, grabbing, and saying inappropriate comments, but propaganda videos like this don't really drive the point home, they just make people scared. Or do you mean the totally not exaggerated problem of the wage gap that's been debunked many, many times even by other feminists? Are those the totally not exaggerated problems that you're talking about? Number nine, care for your masculinity and the issues caused by the toxic societal model of masculinity. Um, yes, waiter, I've had I've had a deep look at the menu and I've decided that I'll order the buzzword salad, because that, that looks very appetizing, with a side of condescension. Make sure that condescension is uh, extra rare, please. Thank you. Look, just between us, I'm not into feminism so that men can feel free to cry or talk about their feelings. To clarify, I think that it sucks that we live under a system that forces men to be strong, manly, and powerful, and tells us that a sensitive man is weak. But honestly, I'm more worried about femicides, sexist violence, rapes, the salary gaps, abortion, problems caused by the contraceptive pill, work harassment, and having to constantly look behind my back when I walk home in the dark late at night. You know you can care about men's issues as well as women's issues, right? That's why I call myself an egalitarian, because I care about the issues of everybody, not just women, not just men, not just black people, white people, gay, straights, non-binary, trans, Pacific, Atlantic, Ocean people. I care about the issues of everybody. It's up to you as men to break down the stereotypes society has imposed on your masculinity. It's not my fault, it's yours. Enjoy! There's a word for when people uh, blame the victim of an issue instead of tackling that issue. Um, I forgot what it's called. It's called um, victim telling or badgering the victim. Mm, I cannot think of that phrase. Ah, uh, whatever. And there's a lot of feminists that say, oh, feminism is for both men and women, it benefits everybody. But then when told something like, okay, well that's great, now, now what, what can we do about the large male suicide rate, the large workplace fatalities, the fact that there's more women than men in college and, you know, there's a, they're not doing as well as girls in school, the fact that there's a lot of unfair divorce settlements where the man gets screwed, the fact that women face less time for the same crime in a court system as well, you know, what, what are we going to do about those issues, that since you uh, claim to care about men as well. Well, actually, those issues are just part of patriarchy and it's up to men to solve them themselves. Right. Number 10. Yield your space and realize that you're not the center of the universe. Well, thanks for talking to me like you think that I'm a child and think that I'm the center of the universe. That'll get people to support your cause. We, women, are heard less than men. And us become a desired dog, we also tend to become invisible. Feminism seeks equality because we live in an unequal society. I'm sorry to tell you this if you haven't realized, but in order to reach a true egalitarian society, a determined group needs to lose power so that another group gains it. It's simple, but it's the most difficult thing. 
Nobody likes to lose their privilege. That's why you have to yield your space and respect women's space. In order to reach a true egalitarian society, we have to act as egalitarians and treat each other as people and support the rights for everybody. Not just women, not just men, but for every- but for everybody. Because you focus on identity politics, do you support the idea that, that there's the privileged gender and the non-privileged gender, the privileged race and the non-privileged race, which eliminates all type of nuance to the situation, and it ignores the fact that a lot of privilege is based on wealth, not exactly gender and race. Alright guys, last one. Number 11, and remember, your feminist friend isn't Google. There's a common practice in the wonderful world of the new ally, which is to constantly support your feminist friend by talking with them about feminist subjects. It's an interesting topic of conversation, don't get me wrong, and seeing you take an interest in feminism is great, but seriously, if you don't understand why it's not called egalitarianism, go to Google. If you want to understand the feminist waves, go to Google. If you don't understand why a compliment can be considered offensive, you can always search it on Google. Seriously, constantly asking a feminist woman all your many questions about feminism is a bit like the new, iron my shirt, I'm feeling lazy. Thanks and have a nice trip. I just find it interesting that she condescendingly says that she doesn't like the word egalitarian and that it shouldn't be it shouldn't be called egalitarianism it's just feminism yet in an earlier part of the article she said she wanted to reach an egalitarian society i just found that interesting how dare you ask a woman to back up the claim she makes that's sexist just use google yeah if you don't think you should have to back up the claims you make your claims probably aren't that strong to begin with i'm just gonna let you know that right now well now that buzzfeed has taught me all the ways that i can help feminism i'm going to go apply them in the real world so that I can make the feminist movement a better place to be. But as always, if you like this video, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube jazz that the YouTubers always say, and I'm off to go help the feminist movement in the best way that I know that I can. By killing myself, because I'm a privileged male. I'll see you guys around. Now where did I put that noose?